Network. Okay, uh, we're back on the Investigative Journal. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Greg Szymanski. We're talking to Zvali, a member of the family, uh, the Order, the Illuminati for over 30 years. Uh, Zvali, you leave the induction ceremony, uh, you walk out into the Vatican courtyard, and what do uh, you leave with one of the fathers, I believe? What did he tell you then? At that point, he just told me to never forget that, you know, he told me that I performed well during the ceremony because I didn't scream or, you know, uh, pass out or, or anything like that. So he, he said, you do very well, and he was pleased. And then we went and stayed at, at a home nearby, a, a local, um, it must have been a local person. I didn't know them. We spent the night there before we went back to Germany. Okay, and what about the other people during the ceremony? How did they handle themselves? Do you remember? I'm going to say, unfortunately, I'm so... Um, and when you're in that kind of situation, the last thing they're thinking about sometimes is what the other people are doing. I was just so trying to not, like, lose it myself. And, and that I, I do know that... I mean, no one screamed or shouted, you know, or anything like that. Everyone was quiet. I think to say dead silence is, unless the person was spoken to, is true, or unless they, they had to go forward and kiss the ring. All right, let's, uh, let's move on. I think we, uh, uh, yeah. the question I wanted to ask you, and this is such a wide subject. I've had a chance to talk to you a number of, number of uh, days, and I've done some stories about it. Uh, you go back home, you're 12 years old. You said you were schooled into 12 disciplines, so your life yeah. begins uh, and you know now you're in some type of organization that isn't uh, that is very different than uh, what most people experience. But tell us, you know, I guess what I want to do is leave it open to you to begin. I mean, you've written so in depth on this story. We're, uh, I'm just going to give you the microphone and let you begin and tell uh, tell tell the listeners what you think is important about your original training, about the group, and about. Uh, uh, you know, many things that I know people want to know about the Illuminati. Go ahead. Okay. Well, Greg, first I want to say that my purpose in, in talking about this is not to glorify evil because there, there are very wicked people out there, very powerful people. And I don't want to at all magnify their power, but I want, do want people to know that this is real, that these people exist, that people who say there are people out there that are involved in this activity, it really happens. Um, I also, because I know that there are children being hurt in the group every day, and that's my motivation for coming forward. Um, I don't like giving interviews for obvious reasons. Um, I'm willing this one time to lay aside my thoughts of personal safety to, because these people need to be stopped. It needs to be stopped. Okay. Okay. Well, go ahead. And... Normally, children in, in the group are born into it. Uh, while the Illuminati very rarely does outside recruitment, that's not their main method. It's just passed down generally, generationally from father to son and mother to daughters to children until the whole family line is, is in it. Um, throughout the centuries, people have tried to escape, but um, a lot of times they were um, either poisoned, murdered, or set up to look like a suicide. They, they don't like it when people leave, and they try to make it very difficult, simply because um, it looks bad. <laughs> they go through an enormous amount of training. From the time you're an infant, you, you undergo indoctrination. And when I say indoctrination, I don't just mean like cult programming so much as watching your parents and seeing what they do. My parents modeled their behavior. To them, the group was very important to growing up. I saw that three times a week, Everything was dropped to attend to the activities. Okay. Okay. Um, what a lot of and after through basically the, the the training process is designed to help you take on your adult role in the group. The Illuminati covers so many levels though too. It goes all the way from what most people think of as like a satanic coven type thing at the very low local level. All the way through, it's a huge, enormous business corporation. At the mid-levels, you have people overseeing finances and administration um, who are overseeing. I mean, these people are making a lot of money through gun running, through white slavery, prostitution, pornography. 
they have links and ties to the mafia left and right. And, in fact, the mafia are afraid of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so, think about it. I mean, you know, but, but because they know that you don't cross the, you know, the members of the group. They have a very spiritual orientation. They're not satanic, though. They're Luciferian, which is a difference. But mm-hmm. the go- ultimate goal of, of their spiritual philosophy and their steps of discipline is they believe that that should you complete all your training, that you become a god. That is their actual end goal. They believe in the achievement of godhood, of luminous philosophy, through different means, through what they call enlightenment or illumination, which is how they got their name. Mm-hmm. Um, they're international. Um, uh, in Europe, there's uh, 12 fathers who sit that represent the different nations of Europe. Um, they are very expectantly awaiting he who is to come. And during that ceremony in the Vatican, I, I, on my knees, I had to swear my allegiance to serve he who is to come. Hmm. They believe so, Alec, can you... Uh... I have to take a break. We'll continue sure. with the, uh, the the massive organization. Your role as a mid a mid level person in the uh, Illuminati on the Republic Broadcasting Network. Okay, we're back on the Investigate yeah, Journal, and I'm uh, talking with Zvali. Uh, Zvali, why don't we just pick it right up where we left off at the break? Uh, you were telling us about this hierarchy that it starts with twelve fathers. Can you just run that down for us so people know exactly how this group's organized? Sure. Uh, um, at the top levels. It's, it's in Rome. That's the center or the heart of the Illuminati. That's where the power base is. And that's why um, all leadership must wear a fealty in Rome, because that, that's considered the core of, of, of the spiritual center of the universe is how they view it. From there, um, in Europe, there are 12 fathers, one for each country in Europe. Um, when I was younger, too, I had to also I would meet with the fathers um, at one point and kiss their rings and go to another ceremony of allegiance to them as well. Um, there's, uh, in the Illuminati, the European fathers, though, rule over what are called the different houses. For instance, if you're from Germany, then you belong to the German house. If you're from France, you belong to the French house. They call them houses. Um, UK, Russia, Poland, Belgium, um, Spain. Italy, um, and others. Um, From there, uh, America was considered a a mission field for them. And in the 17, or actually in the 1600s, uh, Pittsburgh became the first port of entry for them, and that's where they first settled. And so that's why it's still considered a a spiritual power base for the group on the East Coast in the U.S. You know, and I did want to mention one thing. Uh, and a caller or a listener or a reader of your stories sent me an email said, uh, Greg, check into the reason why Bush, uh, President Bush, right after being elected, went to Pittsburgh and talked uh, to a Masonic group there. Uh, I found that quite interesting. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it, it, it's, it's the spiritual power base for, for the group. From there, um, it spread out, it, um, of course, to the Atlantic Seaboard and, and then throughout the nation, and the while the nation is divided into many regions, uh, multiple regions, seven main regions, the East, East Coast region has its spiritual power base in Pittsburgh, but the administrative power base is in Alexandria, Virginia. That's where they administer the finances or the day-to-day operations. The West Coast or the West region or West of the Mississippi has its power base in the San Diego area. And that's where um, you spent a lot of time, correct? Yes, yes. I was okay. sent from the Alexandria Council sent me to San Diego to help them out. Okay, okay um, go ahead. Let's see. Those are the, t- the two, of course, main regions, and then each of those regions are divided into sub-regions. And so then you have your regional council sitting over those and overseeing activities. I mean, if you can think of the structure of a large multinational corporation, that's really – how the Illuminati is structured. Then beneath each of the regional councils are your local councils. They call them sister groups or sister, or your local councils, and then you have your local groups under those as well, your, or what they call the sister groups. So um, any major metropolitan city could have anywhere from 5 to 15 groups, depending on the size population base. 
Now, you were saying that uh, uh, how many people are in this group in America about, from your estimate uh, of knowing a lot of this stuff? Go ahead. Pure Illuminati, I'd say about 1%, give or take. Based so you you look it's a fairly you, uh, big organization, correct? Oh yeah. Now they're you know just in the in the uh their goal basically just give us the over, the broad overview goal and then I want to get into some of these uh uh you know your role in it and uh, some of these uh, re, uh ways that the Illuminati makes money that you learned about. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, when you say to rule the world, it almost sounds laughable, like, yeah, right. You know, I think people get ideas of, like, thinking in the brain, wanting to rule the world. But really, that is their goal. They believe that they are the intelligent leaders, and they believe that the rest of the world are sheep who need, need wise. They see themselves as wise leadership, so they they believe that their goal is, is to rule the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, but at the same time, um, they have ways of doing this. Their main methods of doing so are behind the scenes. They believe in infiltration of the media, of education, and of government. Those are the three areas, and of the financial system. And they've successfully done quite a bit of all four throughout Europe and the U.S., as well as other countries. Now, you said that they, you're basically the uh, Illuminati is divided into about six or seven different groups, and everyone is born into a group. Can you outline what those groups are? Well, no, it's, it's all one group, but it just has different levels, you know. Yeah, um, that's what I mean, like the yeah. sciences, the government. Oh, 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 uh, well, it's, no, okay, the Illuminati is divided into different branches of learning. And okay. th- these branches include sciences, military, government, leadership, scholarship, and spiritual. Those okay. are the six branches of learning. And while all children need to undergo some training or teaching in, in each area, as they get older, they, they, they begin profiling you from infancy, and they know where your aptitudes and abilities are. Then you are you really go into you, most people specialize in, in one branch or possibly two branches of learning. And you were involved in what branch? I was heavily involved in sciences. And also, uh, to some degree, uh, I did some spiritual as well, but mainly hey, sciences. Uh, just to backtrack one minute, these 12 disciplines, as a child, you were uh, regularly trained in this, correct? Yes. Okay. And what were those disciplines? Were those disciplines? I mean, if just uh, you don't have to go through each one of them, but what primarily were you taught? Um, I think the best way would be to just give you an example of just one one type of training that they do. Okay. And I, I was two years old. I was left in a room for probably a 24-hour period. When you're that age, it's hard to estimate, but it was a long time. I know that the sun did go around <laughs> at least once. You know, it wasn't just like a few hours. And at that age, when you're two and you're left completely alone without food and water, you're terrified. And at the end of the the, the um, time, I was I was just dying of thirst. I remember I was just I, I've never been so thirsty in my entire life. And my mother were, walked into the room because a lot of times they have the children, you know, or the parents as train the children at these early ages. And there was a table in the middle of the room, and I'm sitting at. And she sits at, and she brings in this cold pitcher of water, and she starts pouring it. I said, Mama, I want a drink of water. And she slapped me out of the chair. Hmm. And I remember crying. And I'm like, and, and, and as I'm crying, and she's drinking the water in front of me, and she leaves. She takes a pitcher of water. And a couple of hours later, she came back in and did the same thing. I said, Mama, Mama, I want water. And she slapped me, I mean, across the room. And after this had happened about three times, 
luckily I was bright enough that by the third time she came in, I mean, I remember crying violently. I just looked at her. I didn't ask. And after she got up and left with the pitcher, then, then a, man, a man came into the room. He said, you did very well that time. And then he, he gave me a drink of water. Hmm. And I don't, you know, this, that was part of the learning not to want stage. And looking back on it, rise now as an, an adult, but the purpose of that, that training was to teach me not to recognize my own physiological needs and respond to them, but to look to outside people to tell me what I wanted or needed. Which now, is, you basically, is, uh, you know, you told me that you led kind of a dual life in the Illuminati. I mean, that's basically how they function. They have a, oh, yeah. Yeah. a day job, and then at nighttime you're quite oh, busy yeah. sometimes with the cult's activities, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to get into, uh, if you, you know, you were talking about these groups. I remember I mentioned to you, uh, you were going, you said you had meetings three times a week. And I said, well, what about if I wanted to go and visit? Uh, maybe do a story about them. What uh, what would happen, or how could would I be able to find one of these meetings uh, that were going on where in your area of Escondido? Well, no, because of the security measures. And a, you really don't want to show up unannounced at a meeting if you could get through their security, because chances are you would never make it out alive. Let's just okay. say that a sudden auto accident would occur, and be reported in the papers. Unfortunate accident, man accidentally <laughs> runs into a tree. I mean, I'm serious. I'm, but the security that they have during group meetings is, is so intense that it would be very difficult. They have uh, security at the one-mile perimeter, the three-mile perimeter, and the five-mile perimeter. They have um, three people assigned, usually one like up in a tree where you can't see them, at the, mm -hmm. the five-mile perimeter. And then you have one person who's standing who looks like a security guard for the state because he's off the march with these states, which is appropriate, and he's dressed in the uniform. And the third person standing behind, hidden behind a tree. As cars come through and they come through the gates, because remember, these are, off, these are gated estates. Mm -hmm. you, know, so that, you know, if it's not someone on their approved license checklist, they'll stop the car and they say, it's, it's, it's just like you had a military um, installation. They'll say, can I help you? Are you lost? Their goal is to delay the person. Now, if the person's saying, oh, is this blah, 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 and they're, in the, and, they, and they're just asking directions, they'll give them directions, they'll be very pleasant and send them on their way to, to mm -hmm. where they're supposed to be going. But if they are acting as if they want to go further into the state, and this is not an okay person, then the person, they will say, uh, all right, well, let's, 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 he could say he's not expecting you. That's a code word. That tells the person either behind, up in the tree, hidden, or else behind, hidden further back. They radio ahead and they say, unexpected visitor. At that point, everyone would, has been trained to pick up and leave immediately within five minutes. No traces of the activity. Hmm. So this is, this is um, some of the methods they go through so you don't get caught. I know that uh, you wrote an article about why the cult doesn't get caught, and that's oh, yeah. pretty specific. I mean, you have so much stuff here, and we can't get into it all in two hours. So please pick and choose what you think is most important. But I found that to be interesting, uh, why the cult doesn't get caught. Is there anything in just a brief uh, time you could explain to us uh, that? Well, their security, their money, their influence. Uh, some of these people even own newspapers. Imagine trying to get a... a uh, article published, you know, disclosing. Um, there's a lot of reasons why they don't get caught, because that's the first thing people ask. But then my next question is, how many child pornographers are out there that the police have been chasing for years and have never found or caught? Correct. And, the, and, the, and they're not even members of a secret organization. They're just trying to hide, you know. So mm -hmm. when now you... you okay. Yeah. You are a mid-level person in this organization, a head trainer. We're going to get into those specifics in the next hour. But, you know, what did you learn about the infiltration of this group into all of our different areas of government, uh, media? Uh, they're basically at the high levels of most of our financial institutions also, correct? Yeah. And... That is a, a great way to uh, pursue their goal. And I guess i got to ask you this. Why, how come things are moving a little bit uh, faster in America now? I remember back in the 80s when I was uh, confronted with this, uh, when I came back home, I didn't really see uh, this kind of New World Order movement, all this different 
symbolism that you see now. Uh, what is going on just for our listeners uh, right now? Why are things stepped up since 9-11? I believe it's because they see they can see the fulfillment of their goal. Of see, I, I'm going to sound very cynical now, and okay. please forgive me for this. But see, their goal is to rule the world, and personally, I believe that they do. It's just not open yet, mm-hmm. and they see now preparing people for when they disclose it themselves openly. Does that mean that they can't be stopped? I believe they could. I believe they take a miracle because of the amount of infiltration I've seen at all levels of society and the world. These guys have a, these people have, and women have a lot of money. They have a lot of influence. And your average person has no idea of, of how much that they, is going on behind the scenes that no one understands. But with that said, so basically, I mean, I think that they're already there. They just aren't open. These people just don't know what they're doing. If they did, I think the average person would be horrified to know how much is going on behind the scenes that, that People really don't know. Yeah, and the point of this interview, one, I had two point, uh, two goals but, but, in this but, interview. But, but, but I don't Go want ahead. to sound despairing because I, I'm also a strong Christian. I have faith in God, and I believe that through prayer and through people knowing that, I mean, I, I would like them to be stopped. I just don't know at this point, how do you take on the financial institutions of the world, the, the major oil enterprises of the world? <laughs> you know, <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> Yeah, you know it is. It is a. It's a difficult question. Now you're in the mid level of this group. You worked your way up to a head trainer, correct? Yeah, yeah. Now, what did you learn? Uh, before we get into the specifics, you, you outline in some of your writings the big money making, uh, uh, the ways these uh, this group makes its money. Can you go over and outline some of those uh, methods? Um, again, if you can think of an illegal activity, they're probably involved at some point. Maybe not overtly at, at the point of where the actual money is first changing hands, but any when you have child pornography, prostitution, white slavery, gun running, gambling, um, then at some point where the money is changing hands, about four buffered by about four layers of people, there's going to be probably someone from the Illuminati involved at that point. These guys have their fingers in everything. Um, no. Go ahead. But they also use legitimate means. They launder their money. I mean, when you have a lot of money, you have to do something with it. And so what they'll call they, I mean, these men don't come in and say, hi, I'm a member of the Illuminati, and I want to, like, run your bank. But what they'll do is they'll quietly come in and become a, a quiet investor, start buying up shares. And over a period of maybe almost a lifetime, they will get a controlling interest in the bank. Or else become a very, you know... And maybe in their son's lifetime, because that's the other thing about Illuminati. The Illuminati do not see it as it must happen now in my lifetime. These people have goals that last for a century or two centuries. They're very, very that's, patient. And that's why the specific training of the children is so important, correct? Yes. Yes. It's to teach you patience. Everyone mm-hmm. knows growing up in the group, they know that we may not see the coming order disclosed or open or revealed in that lifetime, but our children or our grandchildren may. So they will spend their entire life trying to bring about the goals of the organization. (laughs) 